good morning everyone today is Monday January 22nd and today uh, is more of a project managing type of day uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop by the uh, projects that we have uh, check up on the guys and see what's going on um, I'm also gonna pick up some material um, there was a revision a kind of a change order to the project that we're working on on the west side um, the client wanted to add six more dwarf Yopon Hollies uh, as well add uh, six more uh, pathway lights. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase those, uh, pick them up, uh, take them over to the guys um, and uh, and talk to them a bit and see uh, see what the uh, the time frame is to go ahead and finish that project. Uh, six dwarf Yopon Hollies for uh, for our client. Uh, picked up the lights, took them to the guys, uh, spoke to them. I wasn't able to get any. Uh, uh, I wasn't able to get any um, drone footage this time. It was a little windy up there on the mountain, so I was afraid uh, of uh, of flying it. I mean, I I, I flew it up. Uh, it was a little bit too shaky, so I went ahead and brought it back down. I'm gonna have George talk to you guys about a design he's been working on. And uh, he'll talk about, you know, destination areas and functionality and, you know, architecture and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and uh, talk to him. Back to the to the original design that you had for, for this client. And yeah. Kind of go, kind of walk it through and... Well, they, they have existing pergola right here, you know, which I'm not sure, you know, what it's for um, function-wise. Uh, aesthetically, of course, house is Mediterranean, you know, so, uh, you know, kind of a Tuscan Mediterranean... Uh, you know combination so uh but they've got trees and right now you know the grass is dying you know really doesn't work so we're creating a um, a landscape area under the trees you know so that it just makes better sense um so that the grass and the trees you know aren't fighting each other um the grass is out from underneath the trees you know which is going to work better because it's hard for the grass to grow when it doesn't get any sunlight um and so we, we and at the same time we want to make it organic because that's what the pool is the pool is existing but the decks falling apart because the because of the materials that they used so we're recommending a different type of material deck uh, we're changing the design somewhat adding planters uh, transition walls um, we're uh, adding a fire pit element to the edge of the pool uh, because they've got an outstanding view of um, Paso. Of El Paso. El Paso. Now this is a this particular design doesn't show the actual finished design uh, that we have on our YouTube page, um, but um, but it's still overall the similar similar uh, finish out. Um, but we're doing like some you know because it's so burning hot on top of the mountain, uh, we're doing some shade structures out there also so they can hang out uh, around the pool. So different different destination spots. Yeah. Uh, for lounging and. Uh, you know, George was talking about having a cup of coffee around the uh, the fire pit area, or maybe uh, you know another patio space where you can do so. Right. And then adding some. Tr so it's already got some landscaping, but we want to add some shrubs and color stuff that works that feels nice that can grow out here. You know, we're not planting, you know, yuccas and cactus, which you know, which works just fine. Uh, but you really want to bring in color. Um, you know, atmosphere, good feeling, you know, so we're, we're adding a little bit of that. All right, guys, so that is it for today. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a little uh, story of how I became a, uh, a licensed irrigator. Late December 2017, um, I went ahead and uh, passed all my uh, ir irrigators exams and you know, got awarded a uh, Texas licensed irrigator. Uh, a few months before that, 
Um, I went ahead and took the course, of course, uh, at the local community college and signed up to take the, uh, the test, the exam in Dallas, uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area. George uh, went ahead and flew me out there, um, you know, paid for my hotel, paid for the rental car, uh, paid for the flight out there, you know, all that good stuff. Paid for the food that I ate out there as well. Um, and I went ahead and took the test. I bombed the hydraulics test, which that was probably the section that I felt I did the best in, but I bombed it. I got like a 43 or something like that. So I come back, I come back to town. Um, it usually takes about three weeks to get your results. Um, so I got them and uh, felt real bad because I, you know, I bombed the test. It's, it's, it's four course or four sections of the test. If you fail one, you fail the whole thing. I talked to George, uh, but I, I let him know that I felt like it was a conspiracy, you know, because when I was taking the course, uh, the instructor said, uh, I think, I believe there's uh, about 14 people in the actual class taking the class with me. Um, he, he actually brought up to light that, uh, that only two out of the 14 people are going to pass the test the first time. Everybody else is going to fail and, and uh, pass it the second or third time. Now take, take into mind that uh, you, you only have three chances to take that test. So you fail it the three times, then you have to take the course again, uh, pay for the course, of course, at the community college, uh, take the course again, and then take the test again. You have three more shots. Uh, I think the course was about 140 bucks or something like that. But I felt like I passed the test. You know, I felt like I did really well. Second time around, right? I, I took. I think I, I believe I took the test on December the 12th. I think it was a, a Thursday. I don't know if that's that's correct, but uh, it was on a Thursday. I took the test and I passed it with uh, 92 in hydraulics. I really felt like that was a conspiracy. You know, they make me take it twice. I pay for it once. I pay for it again to take the second time, and then I, all of a sudden I get a 92. I don't know. So I passed the test. I went ahead and uh, received my certificate and my license number um, and then I went ahead and uh, you know registered with the city of El Paso as a licensed irrigator so uh, I am ready and prepped to you know to design and, uh, and pull permits and all that good stuff with my Texas license license irrigation uh, license number so but I felt like that was a cool story I went I, I went out there you know all confident you know I told George I was ready you know, and uh, and I flopped, man. I flopped. I still, to this day, feel like that was a conspiracy, though. George might think otherwise.